Guys, I'm back. I'm back on YouTube after like two weeks. Star Wars brought me back to YouTube. Thank you, Star Wars. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, hey there, guys. What's up? What's going on? It is Autobot Mike 18 here, back with another movie review. Guys, real quick, before I get into this review, I just have to preface a couple of things because I know I've been off YouTube for quite a bit, and a lot of you guys are going to be like, what's going on, Mike? Are you good? You know, what's happening? Guys, I just got on winter break, okay? I'm, I would love to, I'll, I might make a video talking about this, another random vlog. I haven't done one of those in a while. Hopefully this week. We'll see. That said, I just got on winter break, guys. The last few weeks, I know the last video I uploaded was my Arrival movie review. Arrival, which came out in November. I uploaded it in December. Um, so, yeah, I know I've been super busy and I've just had a lot going on. Um, with school uh, these last couple weeks because um, I'm currently working on a film and I'm working on several other films. So I've just been really super busy, but um, I am back uh, for a while. I have two weeks off. This week is Christmas week and then the following week is New Year's week. I have a little time off. And then I would normally have three weeks off in January, but I don't because I'll be on films uh, for like the whole week. So I'm gonna do my best guys to get up videos. I really apologize for any delays and stuff, uh, any videos I normally get up, but I'm gonna try to do all these reviews. I'm reviewing a bunch of movies today that I've seen um, in the last couple weeks. I'm watching other movies this week. I'll review them, my top 10, everything, all that will be coming. I will do my best to get all that to you guys, I promise. That said, I just want to super apologize, guys, for just not being around, and I want to thank you all for being as understanding as you guys are. That said, let's talk what you got. Let's start talking about what you guys are really here for. You don't care what's going on with me. You guys want to hear, you just want to hear my thoughts on the new Star Wars movie. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I figured that. Guys, anyway, yes, that's what I'm going to be reviewing in this video. I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars, blah, blah, blah. Rogue One, a Star Wars story. There you go. Or just Rogue One. They had to throw in a Star Wars story there in case... They thought people were dumb. They probably thought people were dumb. Like, oh, no one's going to know. This is Star Wars. We got to make millions this first weekend. We got to throw Star Wars in that title. So, yes, now it's Rogue One, a Star Wars story. <laughs> I almost said, like, Star Wars Episode Eight. you know? I was just about, I was ready to say that. Next winter. Guys, yes, yeah, so Rogue One, a Star Wars story is now out. I'm sorry I saw this movie Thursday night. I actually had free time Thursday night. I went and saw it at, like, the 1030 screening or whatever, and I didn't get a chance to review it all weekend, but I'm reviewing it now. I'll get the review up as soon as I shoot it, but, um, got a lot to talk about. Of course, all spoiler-free. I'm not going to spoil a word of this movie because it is brand new. It's something as big as Star Wars with such a big fan base. I do not want to spoil anything. So guys, Rogue One essentially is a prequel, and we all know how great the pe the prequels have fared in the Star Wars universe. I'm just kidding. I haven't even seen the prequels. You guys know I haven't seen them. I've only seen the original trilogy and now The Force Awakens. Um, but Rogue One does act as a prequel to the film that started it all, the original Star Wars that came out in 1977. Um, this film follows Jin Erso, played by Felicity Jones. Um, she is essentially the head of this small group known as Rogue One, uh, a group of rebels, and she is the daughter of um, Galen Erso, played by Mads Mikkelsen, who essentially works for the Empire and has contributed to, in a big way, the building of the Death Star. Okay, so it is up to Jin Erso and the group known as Rogue One, um, this small group of bandits, essentially, um, and uh, rebel, you know, the part of the Rebel Alliance. They have to steal the Death Star plans, and essentially, what could bring about the end of this, uh, the end of the Death Star, for the Rebel Alliance before the 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 um, the Empire gets to use it for their own purposes, and that is Star Wars Rogue One. That's Rogue One right there. It's just, it's kind of like a fast-paced action movie in the Star Wars universe 
where they have to take something. So it's almost like a thriller, essentially. You could go as far as to say it's a heist movie, even though it doesn't really enter into that genre. But that's kind of what it is. Star Wars is normally more so, you know, borderline like sci-fi. Of course, it's sci-fi action, drama, you know, whatever. Um, but this is a lot more so a thriller to an extent because of the stakes at hand of this small team having to steal the plans for the Death Star, which is just... Like, this is so crucial. This is for the, the the Rebel Alliance. This is the one thing they're banking on. They need these plans or else the Death Star is going to... It's going to do some damage, as we've seen in the Star Wars movies. So it's up to this group to steal these plans. And obviously, if you guys have seen A New Hope and you've seen the entire original Star Wars trilogy, you know where, especially A New Hope, do you know where this is going. But that being said, I'm not going to spoil anything else about this movie. I really don't want to say much else about the characters, um, like in terms of spoilers. I will talk about them. <laughs> But in terms of just Rogue One in general as a movie, I'll say this about the movie. It's a blast, okay? It's undeniably a blast of pure entertainment, and I was just absolutely enthralled throughout a, about a majority of this film. Okay, I was totally sucked in. The stakes were there. The tension was there. Everything felt real and felt exciting throughout this entire thing, and that is ultimately what I just have to praise about Rogue One. I, that, that's just undeniably what works the best about this movie um so ultimately guys to just i don't know I'll, I'll jump into i think i i'll say this much about rogue one as fun and entertaining as it is what what stopped it for me for it from it being like the best star wars movie or like up there with the prequels, uh, not the prequels, wow, up there with the original trilogy, I haven't even seen the prequels, <laughs> um, what stopped it from, like, it going to that, like, high of a status for me were some character issues I had with the core characters, and just in general, not getting to spend enough time with certain new characters, because all of these characters, save for maybe two or three characters from A New Hope, all of these characters are new. We've never seen them in any in any general iteration of Star Wars, or at least I haven't. I don't know if they're in other Star Wars things. Like, I don't know. I know there's other series out there. I don't know of any others. But from the movies, I haven't seen them. Like, these, are, these characters are all new to us. So I feel that we definitely needed... I, I was at least looking for an emotional attachment or some sort of connection I could make between uh, at least the good majority of them. And I felt that was rather lacking for most of them, apart obviously from uh, Felicity Jones's character, Jin Erso. Um, I, I wanted more from the rest of the Rogue One team, as badass and as awesome as they were. I wanted more, maybe more backstory, you know, what was really going on with them before the events of Rogue One started, you know? Um, so honestly, I think that's, if I had to complain about anything, that's the one thing I would complain about. But to get introduced to a whole new slew of characters was very interesting, as opposed to just following like Han Solo in The Force Awakens and, you know, characters from the original trilogy. It's, no, it's always nice to get new characters, don't get me wrong. And I was glad that we actually did have a movie following a bunch of this, like, slight ragtag team of, 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 uh, of, uh, you know, like pilots and everything and, and captains. Uh, so I, I, I was really into it. Um, there's a blind, um, uh, there's a blind guy who really believes in the force and he's so awesome. Okay. There, there's just so many awesome moments that these characters have. The only thing that I felt was missing was that emotional attachment, that connection to them, maybe an ounce or a scene of some of their backstories. That was the only thing I was really looking for and was something I didn't get a lot of. I could even say the same for um, several other characters who aren't essentially part of the core team, like Forrest Whitaker plays uh, Saw Guerrera, I believe his name is. He's sort of like a mentor to Jin Erso uh, when she was younger. And they have a nice scene together, but that's really all we get of Forrest Whitaker, per se, and I kind of wanted more. Why is his character walking around, hobbling around, uh, you know, 
like what what's going on what, what was his deal essentially I could even say the same for essentially one of our main antagonists of this film director Krennic played by uh, Ben Mendelsohn I kind of wanted more of him is he definitely like up there with the baddest of the bad of the Star Wars antagonist definitely not um, it is amazing I, I don't want to talk I don't want to say a lot about Darth Vader um, at all just for the sake of keeping things spoiler free but holy shoot it's just great to see him back in this film, guys. Let's just, I'll just keep it at that. I definitely would have, I wanted, I wanted another scene or two with Darth Vader, though. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I definitely did. <laughs> the one thing we got with him, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, amazing. Um, now, I know it seems like I've been raking on this movie. I actually really had a blast with Rogue One. So let's get into what I felt really worked about this movie. And I think it's just starting off with just the general plot. When I saw the trailers for Rogue One, I was like, that sounds awesome. That is like an actually worthy like prequel idea for the first film in the original trilogy. Like, it makes sense. Like, to see, it, it's so awesome to think that they, they built a whole story around the original team that has to steal the Death Star plans. And I was super into that idea from the get-go, and it comes across very well on screen. And just the idea of this movie being a high-stakes thriller trying, with this one side, try, with the Rebels trying to achieve this one thing, the plans, um, it, it's just entirely riveting throughout the entire film, and I was really, really into it. Um, in terms of, I, I think the movie is very well cast. Felicity Jones is great. I was skeptical with her going in because I, I wasn't the biggest fan of her in other movies I had seen her in. Um, I thought she was good in The Theory of Everything. I didn't think anything about her was mind-blowing in other films I've seen her in. I thought she was very good in Rogue One. Um, I, her character was obviously the one I was into the most. I got that backstory I was looking for from her. I understood all of her motivations. She came across as a total badass on scene. Um, and I was just really into her from beginning to end. Um, I, I was even into the rest of the casting for the rest of the team. Um, Diego Luna I thought was great as uh, Captain Kazian. Um, I thought he was amazing. Um, I, I really, I'm so glad Riz Ahmed got cast in this movie. He, that is such a great actor right there, and I'm so glad he's getting more parts. And I was, I would say it was probably for me, for it was for me, I was into probably his character one of the most out of everybody on the team. Probably not only because I think he's an amazing actor who deserves more roles, but um, I, I, I was just. Um, I, I love, let's just say this much without giving anything away. His decisions in the end of the film, I, I really admired. Um, and then I, I was into um, uh, Donnie Yen's character as well. Force Whitaker was great. Everybody was really great. Ben Mendelsohn was arguably great, although, again, I wanted more from characters. The actors are all fantastic. Um, Gareth Edwards directed this movie, the guy who directed Godzilla, I, I think some people who didn't like Godzilla were kind of, probably kind of skeptical about that going into this movie. Do not lose any faith, I thought he did a great job, I loved the shots, the, the staging and the layout of everything, it, everything just feels so much like Star Wars, it, I, that's the thing that you definitely gotta be worried about. All the, as separate as this movie is, essentially with this new cast and with this idea of making it sort of like a thriller to achieve something um it's it's definitely separate from the other star wars movies but it's got to feel like it's in the world of star wars and it absolutely does of course with the amazing visual effects and everything that went into the production design everything just looked flat out amazing um i think that the score i know a lot of people are going to complain about the score of the movie because John Williams didn't score the entire thing. Michael Giacchino did everything new apart from using John Williams' music from like anything that we're used to, any familiar track we're used to from any of the other Star Wars movies. That's John Williams doing, of course. But anything that was new didn't bother me or anything. I felt everything sounded great. The sound design alone is amazing. Um, you know, just in terms of like editing and mixing, amazing. Um, like, everything is there to make this a perfect Star Wars movie. But what elevates this movie for me and really sucked my engagement into it, and I, I could just be fanboying out here and just geeking out, and like, God, yeah, this is total awesome. But it's actually just really well-crafted filmmaking, suspense filmmaking, with excellently crafted core and well-choreographed action sequences 
and just amazingly, et amazingly cut together sequences is the final act of this movie. Holy shit, the final act of this movie is everything and more I wanted Rogue One to be. It's, it's intense, it's enthralling, it's just mind-boggling. I was so into it. I love cutting back and forth between all characters because they're all on different missions essentially to carry out these plans. They're in enemy territory and they are outgunned for sure, but they are not let, they are not stopping without a fight and my goodness it's so satisfying to watch everything go down and without spoiling anything guys the ending of this movie in terms of our team our rogue one team i don't want to say anything but they went the most non-cliched way possible to end it that's all i'm gonna say i loved it for a second i didn't see it coming gradually towards the end of the movie i'm like well, that's probably how they're going to end this movie. And then they ended it the way they did, and I was like, that's right. It, just, it felt very respectful. That's all I'm going to say. It didn't feel like a copycat or a ripoff of something else. Um, it felt... It just, it felt earned. It really did, okay? It really did. I, I loved it. And then the very final ending of this movie... Don't want to say anything about it. Just go to the theater and be amazed by yourself. But it's fucking amazing. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it really is. It really is just mind mind blowing. It, it is. I, I can't say another word about it. I don't want to give anything away. Um, but holy shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys, that is essentially Rogue One. Oh, also, I just looked at the poster and I saw him. K2SO. I loved him. I loved him. I loved the guy. It's an amazing droid. I just, they're all so great. I love the droid characters in these movies. They're so amazing. I just had to throw that in there. Guys, That those are my thoughts on Rogue One, a Star Wars story. You know what? While it didn't achieve the status of Force Awakens for me, because I was into Force Awakens. I know the thing now on the internet is to hate on the Force Awakens. I don't. But if you do, fine, I guess. Um, but I was, I loved The Force Awakens. So... Although it didn't go as high for me, I loved what they did with it. I loved just taking us into a different place in the Star Wars universe with different characters. Although I had issues with how certain characters came across on screen for me and how I wanted to be more emotionally invested into some characters, how I wanted more of Darth Vader. Little nitpick. <laughs> um, I was still thoroughly engaged into this film. The stakes, the tension, the plotting, the editing, um, the, the, the casting in general. Um, the music, the action sequences, everything else works for me in this film. I think they really went in the right direction with just a couple little things. This could have been a perfect movie, but it is just really fun and entertaining. Of course, if you're a Star Wars fan, you gotta go run out and see Rogue One. There's no question about it. Guys, in the end, I am gonna give Rogue One a Star Wars story a solid grade of an A- minus or a 9 out of 10. There you have it for Rogue One. Our new Star Wars uh, movie has come out and it is among us and now we'll wait for episode eight next winter guys that is all i have to say about rogue one what i want to ask from you guys now is have you gotten a chance to see rogue one yet what do you think of the movie is it you know as good as the other star wars movies where does it hold up where would you rank it what are your thoughts on it guys as always thank you so so much for watching i really appreciate it start talking about rogue one down below and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys